The Natural Resources Conservation Service, NRCS, uses a nine-step planning process whenever it begins a project. The purpose of the steps is to develop and implement plans to protect, conserve, and enhance natural resources within a social and economic perspective. The planning process provides the framework for developing conservation plans on the basis of ecological, economic, social, and policy considerations. Implementation of these plans may then be facilitated by utilizing technical, educational, and financial assistance programs from NRCS or other sources. Starting with the first phase of collection and analysis, we want to identify problems and opportunities. Everyone needs a reason to plan, and planning can start with a problem, an opportunity, shared concerns, or a perceived threat. Initial opportunities or problems are first identified based on readily available information provided by the clients. There may be information available to the county conservation districts or through a larger scale conservation plan. During the second step, stakeholders identify and determine their objectives. A conservationist guides the process that includes stakeholder needs and values, the resource uses, and on-site and off-site ecological protection. Objectives may need to be modified as new information is learned later in the inventory and analysis stages. It may not be finalized until step four of the planning process. In the third step, appropriate natural resource, economic, and social information for the planning areas is collected. The information will be used to further define the problems and opportunities. It will also be used throughout the entire process to find alternatives and evaluate the plan. It is important that as much information as possible can be collected so that the plan will fit both the needs of landowners and the natural resources. Inventories can range from a farmstead or a small watershed all the way up to a complete inventory of resources for a state or for the entire nation. In the final step of the collection and analysis phase, we analyze resource data. Here we study the resource data and clearly define existing conditions for all the natural resources, including limitations and potential for the desired use. This step is crucial to developing plans that will work for landowners and their land. It also provides a clear understanding of the baseline conditions that will help to judge how effective the project is after it has been put into place. Moving into the next phase, decision support. Step number five finds us formulating alternatives. The purpose of this step is to achieve the goals for the land by solving all identified problems while taking advantage of opportunities in meeting the social, economic, and environmental needs in the planning project. With NRCS conservation planning, we often can help landowners formulate alternatives based on financial assistance programs that help offset the expense of implementing conservation practices. In step number six, Having already formulated the alternatives, we want to evaluate those same alternatives to determine their effectiveness in addressing the client's problems, opportunities, and objectives. Here, attention must be given to those ecological values protected by law or executive order. In step seven, it's decision time. At this point, the landowner chooses which project or plan will work best for his or her situation. Here, the planner prepares the documentation. In the case of an area-wide plan, public review and comment are obtained before a decision is reached. As we enter the final phase, phase three, application and evaluation, step number eight is where we implement the plan. Here, technical assistance is provided to help with the installation of adequate and properly designed conservation practices. At this point in NRCS conservation planning, conservation engineers step in and make designs based on NRCS technical standards. Assistance is also given in obtaining permits, land rights, surveys, final designs, and inspections for structural practices. In our final step, we evaluate the plan. Remember, conservation planning is an ongoing process that continues long after the implementation of the conservation practice. By evaluating the effectiveness of the conservation plan or practice within a plan, stakeholders can decide whether to continue with other aspects of an overall area-wide plan. 
This wraps up our quick overview of the NRCS 9 Steps planning process. Remember, although the 9 Steps are shown in sequence, the process is actually very dynamic. The process could start with any of the first three steps, or even step 9. Cycling back to previous steps is often necessary. For example, steps 1 and 2 may not be finalized until step 4 is completed. Also, some planning activities may overlap planning steps, and some activities may not necessarily occur in a particular planning step each time. So be flexible and keep these steps in mind.